Hello everyone and welcome back to another edition of the Tea Brief back in Blighty, back in this room, uh, which is quite appropriate because the last time I did a Tea Brief in this room was for Wilton Mill and today we're doing the Tea Brief for Wilton Mill, the second time we've been to Wilton Mill this year. Um, only SB60 this weekend, so not talking about the endurances, although I will talk about it uh, very briefly. In fact, I see, no re no, I see nothing else to talk about, so... Let's talk about the endurances real briefly. So first of all, before I talk about the free swans, before I talk about anything else, I want to say a big congratulations uh, to Yusuf, Matt, and whoever else was waiting, racing for, wait, this isn't a sim rig, questionable name, um, but no, no, seriously, if, if they are watching, if you are watching Matt, Yusuf, and whoever else was waiting for you, well done guys on your first win this year. Um, Yusuf, I used to race him back in BKC. Matt, I've, I've got to know this year. It's Matt Horgan. Great guy. Really, really nice guy. So is Yusuf as well, to be fair. Um, very competitive. Little bit of a rivalry between me and him. Um, but yeah, so well done to them. Um, in terms of the championship for the Free Swans, we weren't there because uh, Tom's in Spain. Jasper had an F-type experience day in the morning. He came along to the SB60 to race in the lightweights. Um, and I could do with a break financially. So um, yeah, that's, that's, that's why we weren't there. Uh, Brillio came third. So in terms of dropped rounds, how it all works out, they have gained 10 points on us and the gap stands at 20 points. So Lid and Bayford, we just need to nail effectively. If we do that, championship should be ours, but anything can happen. I'd love to go out on a couple of wins or at least get one win um, to show that we, like, we are still well and truly in it, still one of the teams to be and deserving of the championship, not just a couple of pot hunters. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's now get into the SP60. So coming into the day, obviously no endurances. The thing about the endurances is they work and work as like a, a, almost a test session. It's sort of like get me up to speed and I can find, work out my foibles, work out where I'm going wrong. And then if the endurance goes wrong, like I did at Klandau, I can then have a much better SP60 like I did at Klandau. Um So coming into this, I didn't have that. It's literally just thrown straight in practice, then quality for the SP60. And I just did not feel right. Did not feel like I had the car under me. Definitely didn't feel like I had as though I had the track under me. I never feel like I have the track under me at Wilton. When I first turn up, I, need, I take a while to get going, which is annoying because I've been there so many times, but hey ho, we move on. Um, and quite ultimately I qualified 17th, uh, one place in front of Richard Newton. Um, so I was second in class because Dickie uh, was back, Dickie Allen. Effectively, what I've worked out is that everyone in the SP60 is called Richard. Uh, so I'm effectively racing in Richard class. Um, if you get the reference there, uh, I salute you. Um, so yeah, so Dickie's back, he qualified sixth, he was out of touch, he was he was, he was unbelievable. So it was a fight once again for second place between me and Richard and any other SP60 driver who could get, a super heavyweight driver who could get themselves in there. I know Stuart Kirk did put a really strong qualifying in. Pete Gillette uh, is never too far away. So good to see, you know, they could get themselves in as well. And they very much nearly did want to that in a second. Um, in fact, I'll come on to it now, why don't I? Because uh, in, going into race one, I got a good start, nothing went overly wrong. I was still in front of Rich. I think I made up a place of two um, and it was just pandemonium in front of me. So I was trying to just be cautious, just keep it out of, not get too involved and try and pick up the pieces later on, which is how I race. Um, as we came into Christmas and then through Boxing Day, Steve Lindley didn't get a good exit and I saw an opportunity to go down the inside into Inkermans and I did, I lent on him a bit and uh, it was a little bit scrappy, but I was through. I thought, right, good, okay, let's move forward, let's keep this covered. Going into Ashby, all of a sudden, braking, and then all of a sudden the engine cuts. I feel myself going like that, have to correct, onto the grass. Um, not sure who hit me, don't really care. Uh, it happened, it was quite a messy start, and I dropped back quite significantly. It didn't stop, which was good, otherwise I would be screwed. Um, but yeah, it was a dis disappointment, but I knew that I was still in the race, and I could still try and catch up to the back of Richard again, who'd obviously got past me. Um, so then got went back about my business, trying to get gain positions, I did that, and then I came up to the back of this chap in blue, uh, he's in a blue suit and a white helmet, and I, he, he had straight line speed on me, effectively. He was faster in a straight line, but I was getting through the corners better, so it was like, it was getting frustrating on the rundowns of Christmas, because that's where I'd like to do my overtake wasn't working. So what I basically, I was just waiting for the moment and I thought the moment had come uh, heading out of the crook and out of oblivion. Um, 
and whatever, I forget what the corners up there are called. Um, but yeah, so heading down the straight towards Christmas, I was like, right, here's the, the movie's gonna come. And then he just started pulling away from me. I was like, no. And eventually I thought, to hell with it, Gwen, I'm sending it down the inside and I'm gonna get you. So that's what I did, I sent it down the inside. The move is, the, the initial move is amazing. If, you, if you're on the Club 100 Facebook page, you'll have seen it. But basically, as I, I'm tucked in behind, I pull out to brake, I pull out under braking even, and as I brake, I'm going into a right-handed corner, my steering wheel is, is pointing completely to the left, full opposite lock, it was fantastic. Unfortunately, I decided so late to go for the move that I hadn't been able to run him out of space without it being sort of like a judge to be not really cricket, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, gave him the space. Then on the exit out of Boxing Day, I'm sorry to say, like, I don't want to sound bitter. I don't want to sound like I'm only focused on me. He didn't leave me space. I had time to think about this. I put the, I put the video up on the Facebook group. Thinking about it in all retrospect, he did not leave me the space that I left him. I ended up with wheels on the grass, pirouetted round, and that was basically the race over. Um, I caught up to that pack at the back, uh, at the end of the race, so it's again, it's a case of what could have been had that not happened. Um, racing incident, his fault, I don't know, like, I could have backed out of it. I could have cut him off more into Christmas. I'd say racing incident, but I would put more blame at his door for the incident than my own. So there we go. But surprisingly, so with two big incidents, um, I still finished 18th because there were penalties. I crossed the line in 21st, but there were penalties in front. So I finished 20, I finished 18th, which is a scored result, which is important at this point because Dickie Allen has decided to, I think he's doing the rest of the championship. So these three winners trophies I have here, probably the only three winners trophies I'm gonna have for this year and um, fight for second really. So, but, but he's, he's putting in a late bid to try and take the championship and it's important for me just to make sure I score points to make sure that I'm relatively assured of it. And to cross the line 18th after the race I had, I was actually quite happy. I was happy with the result. Not happy with the race, but happy with the result. And that's the main thing. So yeah, and then Richard was 14th, so he was only four places in front. There was one car between me and him in the actual starting grid. So I was like, I thought, you know what, it, second place is still on here. It's still on. And you know what, I've had a bad first race, and what tends to happen is I have a bad, when I have a bad first race, I have a really good second race. So I went into the second race in great spirits, and the start happened, and I, again, the first five minutes, didn't feel like I had the car underneath me. Um, was still Could still see Richard, could see he was close, and um, I thought, right, I've got to try and get close to him. I've got to try and make these moves. And then as we're coming into Christmas, I did have a moment where I did a proper big lock up and a guide was able to get past me. So I was like, oh, brilliant, here we go. Um, but then the race started to come back to me. Things started to work better. And I got hit, I got, I got some great moves into Christmas. Guy in, a, guy in a white helmet and like he's got an M on the back, like one of those mer black suits. And then on the same lap I did that, Philip Goodless uh, got... Uh, Richard, so then it was Richard, then me. So, similar situation we've been in quite a few times this year, me chasing after Rich, trying to get him down after a poor start from me, or poor, poor circumstances for me. Um, coming up down down towards Christmas, um, he's racing the bear, Jason Bear, the grizzly, um, into Christmas, and then I have a think about, oh, I'm gonna send it, I'm gonna go for it, I go for it, but it's not quite enough, because I don't want to then plow into the back of Jason Bear. Uh, so a little bit of contact between me and Richard, but Richard gets to the corner back, I let him go back through, racing respect, because I've got a lot of respect for Richard. Um, and then as we're coming through the lap, uh, Jason wasn't using enough of the track, I felt. He wasn't using enough on the exit of the first of the reverse Lesmos. Um, so, Richard had a good run on him out of the second of the reverse, as most down towards the boot. Uh, so Jason defended into the boot. Um, Richard was sort of getting all caught up behind him. I then took the um, sort of the optimal line all the way to the left, coming into the right hander. I did tap the back of Richard a little bit, but it, I wouldn't say it was enough to be warranting of a contact warning or, or, or a contact penalty or an ABC or whatever. And ultimately I then had the inside line for stadium corner, whatever it's called, called um, monster curb corner, and boom, that was that. Got past Richard and then the very next lap, um, of that, no, the lap afterwards, I got Jason um, in a brilliant move into Christmas. Like moves into Christmas are quite... It's just it's a, it's, a, it's a hairpin, so to get out the inside, you're there. But Jason was defending hard, but I've made sure my cart was already in a position where he couldn't defend. I, I had the inside line, got down the move, really happy with that one. And then I spent the majority of the rest of the race just pounding round, trying to, making sure I created a gap, making sure that 
uh, Richard couldn't come back at me and hope, fingers crossed, that enough people overtook him to allow me to get up into second. And after a while, I could see, as I was coming out of Ashby, I could see that group coming through Inkman's and I could see Richard had fallen back. So I was like, yes, come on, all right, this is on. And then I just suddenly said to myself, actually, no, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. okay, yes, you have got a gap. There could be penalties for the guys behind. You could get caught up. Anything could happen. Like, just keep doing what you're doing. That very lap where I, where I thought that, came around the final corner, look at, this, look at the digi flag, what do I see? Penalty 17. Richard had got himself a penalty for, um, it, was a, it was an advantage by contact, or it was a contact, something. Uh, I think he'd sort of, he'd gone for a move that wasn't maybe wasn't necessarily on, um, and I think forced the driver off a little bit, based on what I, based on what I heard. Um, and yeah, he got a four place penalty for that. And as soon as I saw that, I thought, right, we're probably all right here. And basically we were, right at the end, I had an almighty battle with Ryan Sandal. As it turned out, he wasn't fighting for position, but I was really proud of the way I defended myself. And for the first time since Rye House in 2017, I properly cheered across the line because I was really happy with how I'd done. I think had it been a genuine fight for position, Ryan might have gone for it a bit harder. So I'm a little bit like, not sure about it, but... Either way, it was still great. It was a great way to end the day. It was a really fantastic day. And top it all off, we got the best trophy of the year. I mean, look at that. Look at that, right, compared to this. Like, I know which one I'd rather be picking up um, every like every time I go, effectively, because I know, I know how that sounds, but every time I've done the SP60, I have picked up a trophy. So, yeah, they're fun. Valid in saying that, but yeah, I, mean, I do like these trophies. But the, the, they've got a nicer bottom. Like if you listen, that's proper like material. And then you listen here, that's more like that's quite a bit more plastic. But yeah, either way, coming home second, uh, Rick Dickey obviously took the win. Um, so in terms of the championship, um, I have a thirty-eight point lead over Richard, and an eighty-seven point lead over Dickey. Um, now, God bless Dicky. He's going for it. If he is doing, if it, of course, that he is doing the final four, final two rounds with the four four results in there. God bless him for giving it a go. I honestly like like like. I'm trying not to say it too loudly because I don't want to jinx myself. Um, but I cannot see a way that Richard that that, that Dicky can make up 87 points in four races. He will outscore me because um, he is just that good. He's a force of nature, that man. Honestly, like third in race one, fifth in race two, like unbelievable. On up there with Dan Brewer and Anwar's pace, sort of thing. So it's an unbelievable driver, and I, I couldn't. I've, 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 I've had a few goes, um, but just not able to challenge him on a proper basis, uh, not even on a consistent basis. Um, so I, 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 again, I say it very quietly, but I think it's starting to look very, very good for me. I think I did the calculation. If I outscore Dicky, or if Dicky doesn't outscore me by more than twelve points in each of the next three result three races, then I'll wrapped up the. I'll, he won't be able to beat me come the final race, the final race on the day um, at Bayford, and I think I need to now. It's twelve points to Richard. So if I can put basically, if I can put twelve points on him by the time we get to um, the final race of the year. The second race of the day at Bayford, the championship's mine, and that's really weird to say. Um, people, I'm sure, will say that. Well, Dicky's coming into it, and look at how he's doing. If he'd have done the full championship, he wouldn't have stood a chance. Um, and yet, yeah, very valid. However, he didn't do a full championship, so not really relevant. Uh, but anyway, on that on, on that bombshell, on that delicate note, uh, it is time to end. Thank you so much for watching this tea brief with my new mug, might have bought out. Normally I, normally I do it with the um, the black chart mug. This is a new mug I got from Granada. In fact, my girlfriend got this for me from Granada. So, cheers. Um, but yeah, that is the end of the tea brief. Thank you very much for watching. If you are still watching and for some reason you're not subscribed to the Rich Tea channel, please be sure to do so. Big, lots of videos going to be coming out soon. I've got a lot to catch up on Bayford, Rye, uh, Bay, um, Landau and Wilton. I need to go and get my microphone back from Rye, which is why I said it. Um, and yeah, that's, that, 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 that is it. That is it. Please be sure to, as I was saying, please be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell for notifications. And all I shall say for now is ta-ta and farewell.